breakfast looks good. 2022 is almost behind us and today I thought I would make a video looking back at the year, all the things that we did and all the things that got accomplished. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. January 2022 started pretty much like every year in recent history and one of the first big things that has to get done every year is taking these calves to the sale. Of course it wasn't these calves specifically but it was the calf crop from the year before. This year things were a little bit different in that we kept several more steers, actually twice as many as what we normally keep, and we have spent the rest of the year growing them out. So that did hurt our auction check a little bit, but we are about to reap the benefits of doing that as these steers that we kept behind are now approaching their harvest weight. After auction day, the next couple of months were pretty well occupied with shop projects. I think I rebuilt this blue loader bucket so that it would work on the 8N. I added some lights to the 8N and just sort of spruced it up a little bit because I knew that this year I would be using it a lot. At the end of January, the 26th to be exact, we got our first calf out of cow number 40 right here, which is a little bit early for us. But if you remember, the prior year we ended up putting our bulls in a month earlier. So our calving season this year was kind of funky. But we did. We got our first calf January 26 out of cow number 40. Calving season this year had its ups and downs as it always does. We got a set of twins out of number 10 here. But I think the storyline that kind of dominated this year was our little black and white face blind calf. It was around the end of February that I noticed my cow number 3 was starting to go into labor one evening. The next morning she hadn't had the calf yet, but by the afternoon she did. And I remember at the time thinking that it was a pretty long labor, but at the time the calf looked healthy, bright eyed, perky ears, and I didn't think that there was a problem. However, when I found the calf, I never actually saw it get up. The next morning the owner of the winter pasture called me and said that I had a calf that wasn't looking too good. So I headed down there to check it out and the calf had actually traveled a fair amount, but he was right. The calf was stretched out on its side and it didn't look too good. So at that point, I couldn't get it to stand up. I thought it was probably on its last leg. I threw it in the back of the side-by-side -side and I brought it home to see if I could help it. I bottle fed the calf in my stock trailer and kept him in there for a few days and it, it didn't take long to realize that he was completely blind. And I didn't know if maybe he would gain his sight back or what exactly was wrong with him, but Eventually, I en ended up calling a vet and explained what was going on with him, and the vet kind of told me that it was probably hopeless for the little guy. So, unfortunately, this story has a sad ending, and the little calf had to be put down. Shortly after the whole calf saga came to an end, I made a huge life decision and decided to quit my full-time job and try to do what I'm doing out here full-time. This was easily the biggest scariest, most exciting change of the year. And honestly, I don't know that I ever would have had the courage to do it without the support of my wife. She's been wanting me to do this for a long time and she was completely on board. I just felt like enough things fell into place this year that we could do it, so we did. After handing in my resignation at my steady, uh, reliable job, we packed up the family and we headed off to Utah. As many of you know, I do some work with Redmond Agriculture and that company is based in Utah. And in 2022, they had their first ever influencer retreat, or I don't really even know what to call it, but they had a bunch of YouTubers and Instagram, you know, people, influencers that they work with all get together at the headquarters in Utah and tour the mine. We got to see the facility where they make the salt blocks and bag up the salt. We got to go see a couple of other cool things. I learned a lot about Redmond and kind of what their mission is and what they're all about. And I have to say, after that trip, I really became a salt snob and I only want to eat Redmond salt now. 
While we were in Utah, I got to learn a lot about Redmond, uh, not only the products that they sell, but the company as a whole. And I got to meet a bunch of the people that work there. Some of the nicest people I think I've ever met. Almost every single person that we met that works at Redmond like, felt like family almost immediately. And uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty neat thing. When we got back from Utah, that's probably when reality really set in. It was like, yeah, I don't have a job now. So now, now is really the time to get busy. And the first project that I attacked here on the ranch was this gate here. This might not seem like a big deal, but I've wanted to put a gate on this fence line for years, and I finally have one now. And while I was putting the gate in here, I went ahead and rebuilt this fence line, another job that was desperately needing to be done, but I just had never been able to find the time for. So this project to me was kind of like the floodgates opening. I got to work on this every single day for multiple days in a row, something that I've never been able to do before. And at that point, the light bulb kind of went off and it was just like, I can get so much done now. So that's what I did. Right after the gate project was finished, I bought this little bull calf right here. The first of two bulls that I would end up buying this year. I bought him and his mother and they came as a pair. He was only, boy, I think he was only like two weeks old when we got him. And you can see he's grown a lot now. He's looking good, nice and gentle the way we like him. Over the summer, I've been, I kind of started referring to this uh, bull calf as little boy. And the irony of it now is that he, he is the bigger of my two bull calves that I have. But when I got him, he was the smallest one. So, and I think I'd already taken to calling my mature bull big boy. So he became little boy. And then when big boy went to the sale, um, the new calf became big, it's a whole thing. But anyway, I bought him and his mother as a pair. His mother is a really nice looking cow and I'm excited to see what kind of calves we get out of her in the future. But for now, little boy is just hanging out in here with his steer friends and life is good. And I remember after getting little boy and his mom home, that was about the time that we started doing a more intensive rotational grazing system. In years past, I had always wanted to try daily moves on my pasture, but I just never really had the time to do it. And this was the first year that I knew I would have time to implement that sort of a system. I was nervous about it though, because I knew that little boy's mom ha had never seen a hot wire before where she came from. My cattle were already trained to it because in years past, I have implemented a less intensive rotational grazing system where they would move like every two to three days. Um, so I didn't know how she was gonna respond to the hot wire. The saving grace was that this year I started doing some work with Gallagher and they sent me out this S100 solar energizer and this thing packs a punch. So even a cow that's never seen a wire before, once she touches it once, that's probably the last time she's gonna touch it. The S100 and the geared reels that I got from Gallagher made rotational grazing this summer very easy. And I've got some more stuff from them that you guys will see soon. Uh, I, I don't wanna tell you what it is quite yet, but I'm really excited about it. I think it's really going to bring my operation to the next level. How much do you guys weigh? If only I knew. It wasn't too long after we started doing the intensive uh, grazing here that it was time to cut and bale hay. The type of hay that I grew this year is called triticale, and in fact, that's what I planted again. Uh, that's kind of confusing, but it's, it's what I baled this year and it's what I planted again this year. So the first step in the haymaking process is to run through the field with a swather, or some people might call that a wind rower, and cut the forage down and put it into these nice strips where we can later come back and bale it. And as long as we're talking about hay in the hay field, I'll, I'll try to answer some questions that I often get. The first one being, what kind of hay? We already talked about triticale. Uh, in the past, I've grown forage mix, which is a mix of oats, wheat, and barley. 
And this hay is a little bit different, I think, than what most people are accustomed to dealing with in that you plant this in the fall, let it grow all winter. Uh, in these cold months, it doesn't really grow very much, but when it starts warming up, this hay will just explode out of the ground. And in the springtime is when I can cut and bale it. I only get one cutting of it this way. And these, these varieties of well, what they are is grasses, they won't grow through the summer. So even if I had irrigation out there, which I don't, uh, it wouldn't matter. This is a one and done sort of a deal, but the tonnage that you get with this kind of hay kind of makes up for it. After the hay is cut and baled, the field sits fallow for the rest of the summer. And I get a lot of questions about this too. Why don't you plant a cover crop out there? Why don't you plant alfalfa or something that you could keep cutting and baling? What you have to remember is that in this part of Northern California, or really most of California, really a lot of the Western states, you don't get summer rain like you do east of the Mississippi. In other words, if you don't have irrigation on your ground, there's really not a lot you can do with it in the summertime. That's why you hear about wildfires and things like that out West because everything just gets dry in the summer and we don't get that rain. After the field was cut, Next step is baling. We don't do any tedding or raking with this type of hay. We avoid that because we can, because we don't get the rain all the time. And then also this is how we can keep a lot of the color and the nutrition value in the hay. A lot of people tell me, oh, that's just straw. You're feeding them straw. Well, it's not straw. Straw would be like after you harvest the grain off of a plant and it is just bone dry, you bale that up for bedding or whatever. This is not straw. You can see we still have grain heads in here. We still have uh, some color. This didn't get as dry as what straw would be. I know that it looks stemmy compared to like a fine grass hay, but trust me, this has plenty of nutritional value in it. I mean, that, after all, that's what the cows exist on all winter long. And you can see they're not skinny. After the hay was baled, the next natural step would be bringing it home and putting it here in the barn. As after all, you may remember, uh, in 21, I only got half of my round bills moved home and then an accidental fire ended up burning up the rest of them. So we definitely didn't want to have a repeat of that. The trouble of it was though, I couldn't move the hay home or at least not all of it. I think I was able to move like half of it home, but I needed to do some barn repairs to the back wall. And then probably the biggest thing was I needed to make some sort of a round bale feeder for these cows. The reason that I couldn't bring the bales home before I got the feeder done is because I was going to be doing all this welding right here. And you know, sometimes you do that when it's a little bit breezy and I just kept having these images of, of sparks getting into the hay barn and, and now not only losing my hay crop to fire again, but losing my barn as well. So definitely didn't want that to happen. So this round bell feeder had to get done first. I have to say that I'm very happy with how this turned out and the way that it works. It's eight feet wide, which is a lot wider than most people would probably make a feeder and it's about 12 feet deep. So I think that I can accommodate about 17 or 18 cows here if every slot is full, which I think they have done before, but it, it, it does get tight. But you can see with the feeder being extra wide, we're left with this like ridge of hay in the middle here. And this, this works out just about right because yesterday I put two round bales in here, which is enough to feed them for three days. Day one, they just eat as much as they can. They gorge themselves essentially. Day two, they're not super hungry, but they will come in here and sort of lick the concrete clean. And on day three, I come in here with a pitchfork and spread out what's left. And that way I, I'm rationing the hay out at um, a proper amount for them. So after the new feeder was all finished, then I could finally bring the rest of the hay home and put it in the barn.
this time of year ended up being exceptionally busy for us. We had the feeder build going on, hay hauling going on. We were able to acquire a new summer pasture for our steers, so we were we had to move them up there, and then that required, you know, not real frequent visits, but a couple times a week we would run up there to check on them. And on top of all that, it was time to bring the cows home from the winter pasture. So it seems like fall and spring are kind of like musical pastures. We're moving to the winter pasture, we're bringing them home, we're going to the steer pasture. People are, not people, cows are moving from spot to spot. And you know, it seems like it takes a while, but you kind of finally get everybody where they need to be settled in, get the herds back together, and life is, is somewhat simple again. So once we got all that done, I sat down and said, you know what? Life is kind of simple now and I can't have that. So we better go buy some pigs. So we hooked up the stock trailer and we headed up to our good friend Ryan up in Vina at L. Edson and Sons where we get our pigs. He gave us another quality batch. And a couple of weeks ago, half of those pigs that we got from Ryan went off to their final appointment and the guy there said they looked really good. He, he thought, he was asking me about the genetics and the breeding, of course, I don't know those things. I don't, you know, I should, but I just don't. Um, but he said they look good. So we're, we're always happy when, when we get that kind of feedback. It seemed like no sooner than we got the pigs home and it's time for breeding season. Eh, not for me personally, but for the cows. Bull turnout is always an exciting day for me, although I don't really do very much except for open a gate, and this year was no different. Of course, before we turned the bulls out, we had to introduce them to each other because I had my bull that you know has been living here, and then we brought in an, an outside bull. So we kind of we tried to acclimate them to each other with a fence line dividing them. And I thought that that was working well, but I'll tell you what, once I opened the gate and put them together, it was on. So after they got that all out of their systems, uh, we could turn them in with the cows and let them do their job. I guess that puts us to about early summer now and really a lot of what defines my summers is irrigating and just kind of doing little odd jobs getting caught up on repairs here and there but this year there was another thing that that I got done that I've been wanting to do for a while and that was I brought my grandpa's ATV out of the shop and spruced it up and brought it back to life and I have to say I should have done this a long time ago because now that I have the little ATV, I end up using that thing all the time. That gets us up to about midsummer now. And I think I, I must have sat down one day and said, you know, it's really hot. We're getting over a hundred every day. What I should do is a big welding project outside. And so began work on the bullpen. for a while you remember that this the hog barn here used to be used for storage and there was a horse stall on this side of it I wasn't really doing much with it uh, the stuff that I was storing in here was mostly like junk that I didn't really need and we no longer had the horse at this point so this was kind of like I won't say a wasted space but it wasn't being utilized to its fullest potential so I decided to convert this to my bullpen and and the reason i call it the bullpen is because like this time of year i'll keep the bulls in here so that i can separate them out of the herd and maintain my defined calving season i i could go back and count how many videos i did on this but i won't i'll just tell you it was a lot and it it's because it was a lot of work we had to do a, sh a little bunk line feeder here under the roof because i knew when i set a round bale here it was going to take them um, I mean, it takes these guys like two weeks or maybe more to finish a round bale. So it's nice that I have it covered in case we get weather, then it doesn't get wet and moldy. So then make this perimeter fence here. 
followed by my my tank proof gate here probably not but I call it that and then since I was making a gate hoop I had to put a new post in here it was a good time to put a new post over there and get this gate hanging up at a proper height where I could easily use it and well I couldn't go that far and not just finish it so all that required was welding up this little short piece of fence line here so now we've got all steel here all the way down to these feeders and this is like several years in the making but this is what I wanted this to finally get to and we're here so all this the bullpen this little section of fence the gate everything down here this this was a big accomplishment I think if I was still working a full-time job this probably would have taken me at least two years to get this far maybe three years um, but I was able to do it in one summer which was just amazing during construction of the bull pen we actually bought another bull the second bull that we bought was actually not even born yet but we had a, a gender verified pregnancy so we knew that mother was carrying a bull calf so it's a little bit of a gamble to do things this way but it's also a money savings in that we bought a cow a recipient cow that was carrying a verified bull pregnancy um, from a donor father and a donor mother so she's not even genetically related to the calf she came from our new friend jeremy up at split creek ranch and he's got a really neat seed stock operation up there So we refer to him as big boy now and he's doing well uh mother came to us with tag number 20 i already have a number 20 cow so now she is 65. summer went on we did some more shop projects i built a three-point spear and a, a basket for the back of the four-wheeler for cali to ride on but the last big project of 2022 was converting this old flatbed trailer into a feed wagon. So as the construction of the feed wagon was happening, a lot of other things were happening as well. The things of note being all the groundwork for the hay field to get it ready to plant. getting the bull pen ready to actually hold bulls and weaning the calves off of the cows. So that's always a big thing to check off the list for the year. And the other big thing that happened shortly after that was getting the hay field planted. After the hay was planted it was time to start thinking about moving the cows back over to the winter pasture but before they can go over there they all have to go through the chute and get their fall vaccinations this year i kind of would have liked to wait a little while to send them over there but i went ahead and sent them early when the feed was not really where it should be because i wanted to avoid doing all of this in the mud that's not just for me it's for them too it's just better for everybody if we do corral work while the ground is somewhat solid so that's what i did because the feed at the winter pasture was so short when we brought the cattle over there i had to start bringing them round bales boy i i don't know if i let them go a week and originally when i started doing that the feed wagon wasn't done yet so we were just dumping uh, bales on the ground it didn't take me long to realize that they were they were not utilizing as much of the bale as i wanted them to and getting the feed wagon finished and functional became the top priority <laughs> And 
and that kind of gets us current. I just put this thing together and finished it maybe last week and have used it since then and, and I'm, I'm happy with it so far. This thing's up and running now. It has been a very eventful year. In fact, a, a year ago now, I could have never foreseen things going the way that they did. And, I, and I'm happy to say that, it, that things went in a good way. I'm, I'm so grateful to have this life that I have and to have the opportunity to do all these things that I do. Um, I think I work probably pretty hard, but I don't really feel like I ever work because I, I love everything that I do. I think I will save my 2023 goals for another video because this, this ended up going on a lot longer than I had planned. But in another week, it'll be New Year's and we can start this all over again. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.